So first of all, I want to say a big thank you to everyone that supported this channel, whether you've recently subscribed in the last few days or if you've been a part of this channel for the last year. Your constructive feedback, comments, liking the videos, everything helps support what I'm doing and the ideas that we have as we grow together. Now, with all that being said, about a week ago, I made a post asking general questions you might have about space or just ideas about space exploration in general. And this video is going to be trying to answer those questions. Now, a lot of these answers are going to be pretty generalized. In fact, most of these questions could probably be answered with one or two videos just discussing the topic. But I'm just going to go a really quick dive into each one and give you a basic overview of these pretty interesting topics. So the very first question that came up was, if there was life on Mars, do you think that Mars would have buildings? Or in other words, if Mars once had intelligent life, do you think we'd be able to see buildings on the surface? And this really depends. See, if we look at scientists and how they can actually look at things here on Earth, it doesn't take very long for Mother Nature to take over areas that humans had once inhabited. Whether it be a deserted town in the middle of a forest or in the middle, middle of a desert, it doesn't really take a long time before a lot of things start to fall apart. And in fact, scientists predict that if every human was to just vanish tomorrow, it would take around 250,000 years for Mother Earth to take back over everything that humans would have done. Therefore, it would only take a quarter of a million years for it to re-go back to no humans existed whatsoever. Yes, there could still be a lot of plastics or a lot of miscellaneous things on the surface, but from an orbital view, you wouldn't really be able to tell. Now, we can't really know this for sure, but this is just an approximation that scientists make. So then if we expected intelligent life to have won once lived on Mars, it would have had at least been around 250,000 years ago or prior. And since Mars is a little bit over four and a half billion years old, it's more than likely that it could have possibly happened, but weather or just degradation over time led it to just looking like a typical planet. So the next question is, if our star, the Sun, was to undergo a supernova, what would happen to our solar system and the Earth? Well, it turns out that our sun isn't large enough to undergo a supernova. A supernova is a pretty complicated astronomical event in which the star has to be large enough for it to become unstable at some point. But the main purpose of that is pretty complicated astrophysics, and I don't necessarily want to get into it in this video. But our sun will actually become a red giant eventually when it gets to the later ends of its main sequence. So what will end up happening is it will grow out past the orbit of Venus and possibly even get to the Earth's orbit. Orbit. So we could potentially be within the sun rather than just an explosion. But this won't happen for another 5 billion years, so we don't have to worry about that anytime soon. The next question is, could a hen lay an egg on Mars or in space? And this mainly has to do with the question of, well, is it mostly gravity that allows a chicken to lay an egg, or is it a muscular activity? And it turns out to be mostly muscular, so yes, a hen could lay an egg in orbit. And in fact, the Russians conducted this experiment in the 1990s, and indeed, a quail was able to lay an egg in orbit. However, this isn't a good source of food, mainly because you have to also feed the bird, and then you'll be able to get food from the egg. It's not a good use of energy. So ultimately, having a quail or a hen in orbit probably isn't your best source of food. The next question is, how far can sound transmit on Mars and what is the speed of sound on Mars? So it turns out the speed of sound is different in any median. So whether you're in water, you're in the atmosphere, or even at different altitudes in the atmosphere, you can have a different speed of sound. So being on Mars, it has a very different speed of fat sound. In fact, it's 70% slower than it is here on Earth. Now the second question of how far can a sound transmit on Mars is a little bit more complicated because you have to look at the amplitude of the sound waves or basically how loud it is. For example, you wouldn't be able to hear me whispering from the other side of, let's say, an arena. However, you might be able to hear me yelling. So on Mars, it is much more difficult to energize the air particles. Therefore, everything does sound a lot more damped. However, you might be able to hear something if it is loud enough. So someone screaming on Mars, you might be able to hear if you didn't have your helmet on. But if you didn't have your helmet on, you have bigger things to worry about than what you can hear. The next question is, what do you think about Mars 2020? Is there anything new to discover after the past or current rovers? 
And for those of you that aren't familiar, Mars 2020 is a rover that NASA is going to be sending next year or next, I think, July or August. And the main purpose of this is to look at astrobiology or whether or not life could have once existed on Mars. Now, let me give you a little bit of a backstory of previous rovers. Every rover has had a specific purpose. So the first ones being Sojourner and Pathfinder was basically able to test whether or not a rover could even work on Mars. That's why it was so small and it ended up working. So then in response, they sent Spirit and Opportunity to the surface, rest in peace to both of them, and this eventually led to the fact that Curiosity could be sent to the surface. Spirit and Opportunity and Curiosity were all focused on geology or, or geologists roaming the surface. However, Curiosity was a major upgrade because it was able to conduct a lot more experiments. It's considered to be basically its own roaming laboratory, whereas a lot of the data we got from Spirit and Opportunity were mostly based off of images and some very small experiments it could conduct. So Mars 2020 is to extend from geologists to more of an astrobiologist to see more about how well things could survive on Mars and conduct more experiments that might have more to do with biology rather than just pure geology. And that has a lot to do with where their location or where they plan on landing the Mars 2020 rover because it's thought to have been an ancient river basin or basically a river, river delta where it could have gone out into a larger ocean. So it's going to be really interesting to see what data we get back from Mars 2020 because it could lead to a lot more information about whether or not life once existed on Mars. The next question is, if Oppie wakes up, then what will happen? And unfortunately, nothing. So after August of 2018, NASA spent basically the next six months mainly trying to get in communication with Oppie. And this meant calling in at different times, different times of the day, because they thought that its internal clock could have been messed up. However, they weren't getting any data from Oppie. So even if Oppie does wake up, they've already basically ended or canceled the mission. So if for some reason it does wake up and start transmitting, we're not gonna be listening for it, which is the main issue because the deep space network or the antenna that are used are being taken up by other more important spacecraft at the time. So since the mission has ended, we might not be able to listen to it calling us back. So the next couple questions I had were about the very first Mars colonists and what skill sets they will need to be successful. And this mostly has to do with the fact that they need to survive, first of all. If we look at NASA astronauts right now, they're trained for a lot of different situations. Not necessarily every situation, but they try and imagine what can go wrong and how can the astronauts be ready to prepare for such an event. So they have to be prepared overall. And if you're going to go on a trip from Earth to Mars, you might think, okay, I have to be ready to live on Mars, but you also have to be ready to survive the eight month journey to getting to Mars. So if anything breaks down on the spacecraft when you're in the vacuum of space, you have to be ready to fix that rapidly. So any technical skills, hands-on work, or just understanding of basic systems in engineering or just design overall could be very helpful for an astronaut candidate that wants to go to Mars. The next question that was asked is, why did NASA completely freeze its rocket building program after the shuttle? I mean, developing of the Orion capsule went on, but but they relied on ULAs or Russian rockets. Why didn't they just build a new one? And in fact, after the shuttle ended, they were developing a new rocket and still are as of right now. That is called the Space Launch System or SLS. Now the SLS is a very expensive expensive launch vehicle, but it's not going to be going just to low Earth orbit like the Space Shuttle did or the Soyuz does, but rather is going to go back into deep space or cis lunar space, which is space around the moon, maybe orbiting around the moon or in more complicated orbits. So the SLS is going to provide astronauts to go farther than we have before. However, it is a very expensive launch vehicle when you compare it to the Soyuz, ULA's Atlas V, or even SpaceX's Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy. So NASA hasn't completely frozen its development of launch vehicles. However, the one that it's currently working on is in fact very expensive, but it's specifically going towards NASA's overall goal to go back to the moon. And that is why they haven't been developing multiple launch vehicles, but rather focusing on this one very strong vehicle. So the last question that I'm going to answer is, if they asked you to go to space, would you do it?
It depends on who they is, maybe what the company or the vehicle as a whole is, but I would be really interested in going to space, whether it be low Earth orbit, cis lunar space, or maybe even to Mars, but that's, that's pretty far out there, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But with all that being said, I want to thank you all again for the incredible support over the last year. I really love the feedback, the questions, and the community that we're building. And all that put together, I want to ask you that final question again. If they asked you to go to space, would you do it? Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.